podcast. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I hope you're all good. I will. Hey, How's hey, everybody. Going? Hope you all had yourselves a a merry effing Christmas. Merry Christmas, and getting everybody. Ready, getting ready for the for the new year. Because once January first hits, everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. <laughs> everything will be fine. We could all go back to normal. Uh, pretend like nothing ever happened, right? That's right, because it's the year that's causing it's all the your year problems. That's the problem. Nothing it's else. Not... <laughs> nothing else. Nope. Uh, yo, thanks, yeah, Mayor Hair, for the raid while we were introing, and thank you, GCX Kluke, for the Prime subscription right now. Do you know if you have Amazon Prime, will? You get a free subscription on Twitch every single month that I, you have to manually. I redo did every know month. that. I did know that. Thank you for reminding me to make sure that I uh, we crashed. Did, did you also know that we're already crashing on Twitch right now? <laughs> it, it crashes on Twitch before it shows me that it's crashing. That's ridiculous. I know it is ridiculous. Uh, I don't know if I should restart it. That's it. That's the show. That's the show. We're done here. It's so annoying. I, I, this, yeah. There's got to be a way to like have us go through a different service that'll like buffer and switch the freaking, uh, the, uh, the server if, if we need it. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Does this happen to you during your regular? Streams? Yes. All the time. It happens all the time. And it just happens to you. Just ha it's so. I mean, we're talking, right? So it's not the internet, right? <laughs> right. No, I know it's, that. It's specifically OBS, or okay. or my connection to Twitch. I mean, it used to happen on YouTube, right? When we streamed to YouTube, so it's got to be OBS. I feel like it didn't do it this much. It's gotten worse. Yeah, but we're still here. Uh, we yeah. did it. We did it under the. I'm, I mean, I'm getting better at switching servers really quickly i just have to switch mm -hmm. the twitch server when that happens it's very annoying but anyway today guys i have created a tier list and we are going to be ranking our favorite games of 2020 across all platforms yes. uh i have a video coming out on thursday about the best switch games uh this is going to be like kind of kind of like uh kind of like like an extra to that this is all games we're also gonna have yes. switch games here too um so this is our list your list may be mm -hmm. different in fact yes i will link you to the tier list that we use if i figure out how to do that uh because i just have it on tier maker over here I, I made it right before we started streaming uh, I only put notable games on here. If you see anything missing, let us know. It should also be clarified that these are games that came out in, in 2020 with the exception of Among Us, but that game might as well have come out in 2020 so, because so, nobody heard of it until this year. These are just notable games right? that I thought would be interest, interesting to talk about. So let's talk about mm -hmm. Among Us while we're here, while we're talking about Among mm -hmm. Us. I don't think it's worthy of being on this list because it didn't come out in, in, in 2020. It did come out for the Switch in 2020. Correct. However, I have not played the Switch version, so yeah. I feel like I it's not worth commenting on at all. It, it's such a weird thing because I would say with very little argument that Among Us was the game for 2020. Between this and like Animal Crossing and... Fall Guys for a little bit. Uh, that was the game that everybody played. Everybody was into. Everybody knew it. Uh, it was like breaking through to the mainstream in a way. Um, but it, like you said, it came out two years ago. It's only now hitting its stride because of the pandemic and other streamers like, you know, promoting it so much. It, it, it's also... Uh... I feel like it's it's a it, it it's a formula that's been done a million times before the werewolf formula or or secret yeah. Hitler or whatever. Is there mm -hmm. a specific name for that sort of genre? Uh, 
Social deduction. Really? <laughs> that's that's an yeah. interesting name. Somebody said we forgot Hades, which is which is a good point. Uh, yes. I have not played it, but I will add it to the list. Uh, I should also point out that of the games that came out this year that I've played, if only I've only played four 2020 games. Every other game I played has been backlog games. But so I, this is mostly going to be a Bob list. No, I think the games that I haven't, I think there's a lot of games on this list that you played, but I haven't. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. So so. I think it's worth. I think it's worth. Uh. So yeah. I. I. I don't think Among Us, the game itself, is particularly like amazing. But I think that uh. It was a cultural phenomenon. Everybody, yeah. all of a sudden, just started playing it. Uh. So I think it. I think it deserves a lot of the praise that it gets. However, it didn't come out this year, and I didn't play the Switch version. And I, I have suspicions that the Switch version isn't that great compared to the PC version, uh, because a lot of the tasks you have to do with the with like a cursor through the the Joy Con. Right. So like, I don't think it's gonna be worth. Uh, did I not put Clubhouse games? I'm not. You have Clubhouse games on. Oh, on I do have list. it on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna. Spoiler yeah, no, alert, that, that's not going to be very high. Yeah. Uh, oh, Spelunky 2. I don't have Spelunky 2. Uh, I did not play that either. I'm uh, putting Among yeah. Us on Can't Comment. Will, you pick a game on here. Uh, Like I said, I've only played four games, four 2020 games this year. Um, Let's go with... You know what? I played the demo of Resident Evil 3. Okay. So let's I thought you talk about that whole that. thing. That's why I put it on here. No, no, I didn't. But so here's here's so here's my history with the original Resident Evil 3. I played the PC demo a lot, and that's it. And I feel <laughs> like <laughs> I'm I never, be playing... we were big Resident Evil fans, but I never played yeah. three. I only played like the demo. Yeah, three was a blind spot for us. Well, because we didn't have a PlayStation. We had a PC, but it was a garbage PC, and we were only able to ever run the demo of it. Anyway, so playing the demo of Resident Evil 3 Remake made me realize that it is just an expansion pack for the Resident Evil 2 Remake. <laughs> That's all it is. There's barely any change to it. Um, that said, the Resident Evil 2 Remake was fantastic. So I would maybe put that in like what is what's the top tier a a is a is good well the, the, right. the, so the highest I'm, is s high, okay that's what i'm asking so maybe like b b okay b because it's a good game again and if this you is, like this the is our experience with the game it's not necessarily like the, a, a full yeah. glowing review of every game on what this i've list. what i've played of it is fantastic is really good but you know, that's only because my love of the Resident Evil 2 remake is really high. Um, it is, this is definitely, oh, wait for it to go down in price and play if you like the Resident Evil 2 remake. So, uh, Sweet Potato Moose in the chat says, is Mario All-Stars really a 2020 game? They all came out 20 years ago. So, I didn't put this on this list. Uh, and then Will mentioned that I forgot to put it on the list. Uh, and... I it's worth talking about yes. because I don't think it deserves to be on the list because <laughs> because it none of the games were changed at all it's just a collection of games that came out a long time true ago. but it's being sold as again per friend of the show Doug Bowser it's being pushed as like this grand celebration of Mario's 35th anniversary um so this was the game that they released for that i mean granted yes the games are they didn't do like the original mario all-stars and remake the games they just presented the games as close to original as possible In some cases just emulated it but i don't know i feel like in terms of like the big switch games this year it's like this and animal crossing if you think about it uh well the from nintendo, nintendo switch, switch game yeah, yeah. but um I don't think that means it deserves to be judged against other 2020 games. 
I, I think that this being Nintendo's big fall game was mm-hmm. an accident. There was definitely <laughs> something else that was supposed to happen that they just right. couldn't release, and they rushed this out. Right, um, right. I mean, that being said, all of the games are fantastic. Uh, they yeah. run very well on the Switch, even though they're just emulated. I don't think that matters at all. Um, and they've been updating it. They got some updates, uh, and they yeah. took user feedback in mind. Like, they made it so you could use a GameCube controller. They made it so that the flood could be inverted and, and the camera yeah. controls could be inverted and stuff. So uh, it's a great game. Uh, all of the games are great. It's a fun time. I recommend everybody get it. I'm just saying it's... Same thing with Among Us. They're 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 amazing games, and and they they did have an impact on 2020. But it, it I don't think it counts. I think it breaks the rules. We can also while we're talking about games that don't count, uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two. This is another game okay, that this, I forgot. That this I will fight you on. Out. I I will say this counts because it, it, it ca- I I I agree it counts. I agree, Cap. This Don't this is me. a full on remake of it. Like, <laughs> yes, it's built on like the code of the original games, but that I didn't know. On on top of that is like all these other enhancements and features and tweaks to make it feel more like a 2020 game. And it's one of the best 2020 games I played. It's the one of some of the most fun I've had all year playing video games. It's the it's the most it's it's like it's like when I played Sonic Mania for the first time where I just played and I knew instantly what to do. I remembered everything on how to play a Sonic game. Once once I went down the ramp in Warehouse and Tony Hawk one, everything came back. I remembered everything. It just clicked and it, it played. It played like I remembered it playing. It didn't play like it was. It played like I remembered it playing, which is better than what it actually was. Okay. Uh, I have not touched anything of this game. So, so, so it's, it's, it takes the originals and it improves upon them, right? Does it make, does it feel better than you remember them feeling? It, well, that's, that's what I'm talking about. If, so if I were to go back and play Tony Hawk one and two now, I'd probably hate the experience. Because mm-hmm. they probably haven't aged very well in terms of like controls and whatnot. However, I remember at the time thinking these controlled perfectly. And this game controls how my memory remembers them, that's not even, how it actually was. That's even better. Yeah. So that's what I mean by this game deserves to be like in the like in the discussion for best of the year, because it took the original and made them basically did what the resident evil 2 remake did took the original and revamped it perfectly for modern times it plays like you remember it being rather than what it was so, so uh pick put it in a tier then a really <laughs> yes right. it's the only reason why it's not s rank is because yes it is a remake it is built on older games but i will go out on a limb and say like if you ever want to experience the tony hawk games don't play the original one and two. Just play this. Okay. If, if you really want to, there's an option to play with the original control scheme. So there's How no reason that? to go back. Why would they change there's the no control scheme? Back. Well, because later games added more features like reverts and manuals and lip transfers. I they were and... always the same. No. The first game did not have the manual. No, I knew that. I just didn't know. Yeah they changed the controls because of well, things the, like that. The, the button layout has always been the same, but like transitional changes or like changing your grind in mid grind. Mm-hmm. Those didn't come till later. So you can play with the more like later edition Tony Hall controls, or you can play with the original controls if you really want. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I'm going to take your, I mean, I, I think, Tony Hawk 1 and 2 are some of the best games of all time. So mm-hmm. I I agree that they could this could be a rank. Um so speaking of a remake that well th- in this case will it took a little too much from the original game. Dark Demon right. Souls, Demon Souls. Supposedly it's completely rebuilt but they tried mm-hmm. to make the controls as jank as the original on purpose. Ooh. 
However, it does, I think it controls pretty well. It is a little frustrating because you, in some cases, you move so slow. And like right. that's part of the, that's supposed to be part of the charm. Is that like right. you input an attack and it takes you like four years to get it out. And then you get hit a dozen times before you can get it out. Right, right. I think this game was a lot, is a lot of fun and really good. Uh, I can okay. see the appeal in it. Uh, I finally, after three play sessions, which totaled about almost nine hours, I would say, mm -hmm. um, I'll say that I finally hit a point where I was like, fuck this game. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like this game anymore. Uh, but I could see everybody's, uh, I could, I could, I could see why this game is such a big deal. It's the first yeah. of the souls games just remade. Um, but it doesn't feel dated at all. Right. I guess because it's a remake. Remember, we played Dark Souls back in the day. It was like one of the first yes. Wolf Den videos on the channel was just us playing through uh, Dark Souls. Yeah, and we were we were way in over our heads. <laughs> we were not prepared for that game. No. Very, yeah. Uh, do you remember the part where the dragon just, just sets fire to the whole bridge? Yeah. That's in Demon's Souls. Really? Yeah, that part is just in Demon Souls. I guess that was I would taken from Demon Soul. I would imagine that being a lot worse than if the controls are jank in dark in Demon Souls. Uh, honestly, like purposely jank. Th they they feel the same as they were in Dark Souls. Yeah. So so uh, I I mean, you can like get different weapons that like attack quicker and stuff like like it fe it still feels good like like when i yeah. when i'm getting a hit i don't blame the game there are times when i blame the game like when i roll off a cliff and like you have mm -hmm. no way of knowing that there's a cliff there then it's the game's fault but i mean yeah that's supposed to be the allure to this game is that it's super hard and you have to play it over and over again also another thing that people kept telling me the game gets harder and harder every time you die and the explanation's right. kind of long and drawn out, but basically every time you die, like uh, uh, it, it, it makes the enemies stronger. And I got to a point in that last playthrough where so I was getting these red enemies that were like enraged and super right. strong, and it was because I kept dying. So it it, it, it kind of it's like a Chinese finger trap. The more you try to get out, the more uh, the the harder it yeah. is. So uh, that was frustrating enough for me to stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh if you're into that sort of difficulty i mean i'm into that sort of difficulty with like platformers i like really hard platformers that you have to die and play over and over again like super beat Boy, right which we'll get into um but yeah demon souls uh it's really good it's a lot of fun especially and it's very rewarding when you get through some parts yeah. uh I, I i think everybody should give it a shot for at least a little bit um but it's definitely not my game of the year. I'll give it... I kind of want to give it low A tier, high B tier. I'm going to put it in A for now, and we'll see. It might move, okay. depending on how many more we, we throw in here. <sighs> All right. We got a lot uh, to go through we, here. Should we do Final Fantasy VII and like try to round up all the games that technically came out earlier than 2020? Oh yeah, sure. The the re this is a full fledged remake. This is well, nothing like the original Final Fantasy. Well, here's the thing: it's a full fledged remake of half the game. <laughs> yes, people, people forget that this is not the full Final Fantasy VII experience. This is a different game. This is not even Final Fantasy VII. And also, the story's different. Right. They're changing the story. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a completely new game. This should not be called Final Fantasy VII Remake. It should be called Final Fantasy VII Reborn or something. Final Fantasy VII Reborn Part 1. Yes, there you go. I can't stress that enough. Uh, I only played the demo. Or two of the demos. Uh, they same. were long demos. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it was good. It's not my type of game at all. Yeah. Uh, I feel like if this was our type of game, I might put it like in the same, same thing as Resident Evil 3 because it's... But the thing, is, the thing is, the Resident Evil remakes are taking the game you remember and just, you know, putting it through a different filter. This is taking the game you remember and just 
completely rebuilding it. This is taking your favorite Lego set of a house and rebuilding it into this weird ornate mansion. This is like a slice of Sonic Generations. <laughs> yes. But, but for but for Final Fantasy. Somebody in the mm-hmm. chat said Yakuza like a dragon. I have added it to the list, but I can't refresh the list because it'll ruin it'll, yeah. it'll negate everything that I've done. Uh is there a way to I don't know. Also, have you played Yakuza like a dragon? I'm gonna I'm gonna hit save. No, oh, then it makes me do all this stuff. I have not played it. I just added it. What I'm gonna yeah. do is I'm gonna give everybody the link so they can make their own afterwards. No. Yeah. Uh, and for games that I haven't played, I'm going to put it in NA. Like, I can't comment on it because yeah. I haven't played it. Uh, well, Final Fantasy VII, I think, is probably really good. Like, I liked what I played of the demo. It's just such a yeah. long game, and I know it's not my type of game. So I just didn't want to invest any time in it beyond that. Yeah. So I feel like I want to put it in can't comment. Fair? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's arguably a sequel to Final Fantasy VII if you believe some fan theories, says Meta Sensation. Uh, would I, you, would uh, you say Final Fantasy VII is more of a reimagining than a remake, says Edible Jim Sock? Yes. Yeah, it's definitely a, more of a reimagining. And again, it's a reimagining of the first half of the game. So uh, we don't know. And I'm saying that because we don't know, like what Square Enix plans to do with the rest of this. Are they going to put out a second volume? Are they going to make this more like a series where every few years there's another Final Fantasy VII remake telling the next part of the story? I think there's going to be two more. I think it's going to be a trilogy. Yeah. Um, Spelunky 2, I'm sure, is good. I'm going to throw that and can't comment also because yeah. I haven't played it. I haven't even played the first one. Um, Hades... I also have not played, but I heard it's very good. So I'm throwing that in can't comment. Uh, I got to turn my heat off. Hold on. <laughs> um, what else we got here? Uh, uh, so I really wanted to play Half-Life Alex. Me too. I, I feel like that would be my game of the year. Yeah, I have I, a friend... I love Half Life, and I think that this has a lot that changes VR. Or yeah, this might be like one of the best VR games. Um, I have a friend who has it, and he says it's like incredible. But I currently cannot go over to his house and play it due to the ongoing pandemic. Um, yeah, you don't want to show yeah, somebody like... else's like VR headset yeah. to your face. But like, but like you said, this this has all the makings of being like the game of the year because it's it's Valve, it's Half Life. Those are always games that push the genre, the the medium forward, and it takes years for other developers to catch up to them. And Alex looks like it's doing exactly that with virtual reality. Yeah, this is this seems like the Wii Sports of, of VR. Yeah, I would love to give that a shot. Uh... But unfortunately, it's just it's just hard to get your hands on it. You have to. I would have to yeah. buy a whole VR setup, and I just don't. I'm not doing that yeah. for for this one game. Um, what else do we got here? I'm gonna throw Ghost of Tsushima in the can't comment because I haven't played it as much as I would love yeah. to. I've re- I've I'm tempted to just because it's on sale right now. I'm tempted I, to just, just buy borrow, it. I have it. Just borrow it if you want to play it. Okay. Next next time you come out. <laughs> Uh, speaking of borrowing, The Last of Us Part 2, Well, you just beat that, that I, didn't you? I did. I played it to completion. So I still uh, have not beaten it. I'm only halfway through the third act. Uh, Where are you, exactly? Half. I'm halfway through <laughs> uh, the other character. Okay. All right. So you still got a ways to go. I got a ways to go. I'm going to put yeah. it on my PS5 and finish it. Because I do, I love the game. I really do want to finish it. It's just so goddamn long. It is. It, it is should not be as long as it is. Long. Uh, I got. It look, should be two games. It should not be one game, or it should be what one, I don't one game see. plus a DLC. Yes, that's that. I will accept. Here's the thing. So, 
I've always liked The Last of Us. I've never been like head over heels in love with The Last of Us. Oh, There's always oh yeah, that's true. You 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 so, weren't as as into it as I was. Yeah, so the, I like I like the first game. I think the story is incredible, but the game itself to me was just uncharted. Just, mm-hmm. just you know, a lot more gruesome. This game, I feel they did a better job just differentiating itself from Uncharted because I actually played Uncharted 4 right before I played Last of Us. Um, and it did it did feel like different games. There are some similarities, but they're, they're different enough that they have their own identities. Uncharted but, 3, you mean? Uncharted 4. I played Uncharted 4 before I played The Last of Us 2. Okay, okay. That's what I meant to say, yeah. But The Last of Us Part 2 is a much more open that's not open world but it's much more open game there's an open world section in the beginning but then like the levels are more they're more linear but like they're much more open you can explore to your heart's content this should not have been included this should have been a a regular ass linear game because the story is not built for a more open oh i see i see what you're saying there's like certain areas that are yeah wide open and, and uh, you, yeah. I, I agree because I mean it kind of towards the later game it feels less open. Um, well, but, but there's there's parts in the in the first half where I'm like I'm I'm looking through every nook and cranny because I feel obligated to, not because yeah. I'm having fun or that I want to. I just feel well, obligated to like open every drawer and like go through the whole area, the whole sandbox of level, just to make yeah. sure that I have all the equipment that I need. And that continues because there's a part in the second half of the game where they go, we ha- we don't have a lot of time. We have to make it to the hospital within two hours. So we're like, okay, oh, there's about six rooms in this building right now. Let me explore <laughs> every single one of them to get every single thing I need. And it just it breaks the immersion of the whole of you know, the experience. But going back to what you were saying about, you know, it should have been one game and some DLC. This should have been just about Abby. The entire game. She has the much more interesting story. She actually has a character arc. She actually goes through different interesting things. Whereas Ellie is just mad the entire time. I, I, and I, that's not interesting. I that's think, not exciting. I think the setup is important because, like, you're supposed to see the situation from, from both sides. You know, right? You're supposed to and see I feel like, 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 is it, are, are they really a villain, or should we? Who should we? Well, I feel here? like they, I feel like that could have been easy because you start the game as Abby, and then you find out Ellie from the first game is hunting her. But wait we all like Ellie from the first game. Why, why is she going after, uh, why is she going after Abby? What did she do? And then you learn what Abby did and you're horrified. And then you hate the character that you can have to then continue to play as. And then slowly you learn why Abby did what she did in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I feel like, cause this whole, both games are trying to make you play as unsympathetic, bad people. But I feel like, the first game was interesting because it's about a good person slowly turning bad because of the world they're in. Whereas this game, Abby, it's the story of a bad person trying to become a better person despite the world that she's in. Mm-hmm. And that was much more interesting to me than Ellie and her whole f- revenge arc. So no, no, I'm probably going to get a lot of None of these are spoilers, by the way, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> we I'm, haven't I'm we haven't said a, a single spoiler the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> especially if you've seen the trailer, then you know you know everything yeah. that we said. Uh, so that that's just where I'm stuck. Like the last part I, two, I, like, I agree because because like it's pretty, it, it's like obvious, like like uh, it it it's obvious, like okay, everybody's because you when you play through the first game, you get it, like okay, everybody sucks in this world, everybody's. Yeah. mad and everybody's trying to kill each other um and that's kind of the whole first half of the game <laughs> it's just like it's yeah. like that vibe and then the second half is like tr- the game trying to redeem the character for you um, yeah so 
yeah i could see i mean i haven't finished it so i i, I don't i don't know uh there's there's a really there's a really good part at the end of uh like the section you're playing right now that's actually like really intense and really interesting um and then it like switches back and whatnot and, but yeah i just feel like like i don't hate the game i like the game i think there's a lot of good in it but it, it is not game of the year by a long shot jeff Keeley. um <laughs> and i and i just feel like i feel like this game got the praise it got because it's you know it's expensive it's, <laughs> Not, it's not, expensive. not just expensive. No, what's what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's it's the type of game that glamorizes the ugly side, and there, there's a tendency in not just games, but like all all forms of media. You know, when when something is dark and ugly and you know violent and vicious, it tends to get a lot of praise because critics will call that realistic and very dramatic joker springs to mind i was um Ag agathorin in the chat just said the last of us is two is like the joker and that is gonna get you in trouble will this that is, is gonna get will you in trouble. trouble but honestly like <laughs> like it's a long like do you see what i'm saying though because like it's a I, long I see what you're saying lines. but I think that the first Last of Us is a perfect example of that, and that is one of I think the best games of all time with some of but the, the best. The, the first Last of Us worked because we never really saw something like that before, right. and it it was you know this was Naughty Dog that were coming off of Uncharted, which is this happy go lucky, light hearted adventure, and years of things like Jack and Daxter and Crash Bandicoot and whatnot, and here they are, you know, trying to be adults, and you know for what it's worth they made it work this it felt like okay we proved uh we can do this once let's just do whatever we want the second time and there was nobody really saying hey maybe we shouldn't do this you know mm -hmm. so i would put this probably in the beer the b ranking okay I, because... I i like it a lot it's definitely not game of the year for me i wouldn't have no. even like considered it i mean it's just it's just a huge budget game and the yeah. game awards like to they're they focus on big budget narrative games like that that's what they yeah. favor for a game of the year i'll put it top of b like like it's amazing and i think everybody should play the first one if you haven't i think the first one's better just uh oh, the yeah. mechanics are basically the same and uh, the story in the first one's better. So as far as much as I've played. And I think the first one's essential before you even get to the second one. Oh, 100%. So if you haven't played The Last of Us, play the first one. Um, it, this game, I mean, I don't know. But if you loved the first one, then you'll probably at least like this one. Um, yeah. You definitely won't hate it. So if you, yeah. you like the first one, yes, give this a shot. If you have the time, because it's long. But you know what? I think it's as long as the first one. I just had more time back then. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think top of B is pretty accurate. This is another mm -hmm. one I might throw at the bottom of A, but you know what? I would say Demon Souls. I would rather play Demon Souls than The Last of Us 2. Ooh. I'll say that. I think as a game, I think The Last of Us 2 is a better movie, but I think Demon Souls yeah. is a better game. There's a lot more it's a it's it's a little more linear there's a lot more you yeah. know mechanically that you can do and stuff yeah and and again i will say like there were parts of the game i really like there's a part where you play as abby where she has to overcome like her fear of heights that really got to me <laughs> um so you know things like that um but yeah otherwise i just feel like it was it's it's excessive is what it is it's mm -hmm. a lot of money and you know a guy basically feeling like i can do whatever i want <laughs> and when you can when you have that mentality you wind up with something like the star wars prequels yikes just saying no the, I, I hate those movies uh when, when someone uh, when no one tells you no you have problems. You know, well, there's a brief moment in time where I was like, you know, I just don't think I like Star Wars anymore. And I, the, I believe and, it. And then The Mandalorian came out, and I was like, all right, dude, I'm back in, baby. 
That's the, that's the thing. Like I said, you know, I used to say Star Wars, or I used to say Luke Skywalker is the best uh, fictional character of all time. Still is. Uh, you know what? Yes. <laughs> um. So let's. We gotta get some more things off this list here. Okay. You didn't play Assassin's Creed. No, did you? Nope, and I haven't since freaking four, and I have no, yeah. I have no desire at all to play Assassin's Creed. Every every year, it feels like they say like, "Oh, this is the good Assassin's Creed game. Assassin's Creed is good again." And then in the lead up to the next game, everyone's like, "Assassin's Creed hasn't been good since two. You know, so th this is a this is supposedly like way different. Like, um, not at all like an Assassin's Creed game. So, my understanding was starting with Origins, they, like, started to revamp it. So, like, mm -hmm. Origins, Odyssey, and now Valhalla are, like, uh, it's at least significantly different from the original Assassin's Creed games. But I'd have a hard time picking the two apart. I think the only real difference to my eyes is that the protagonists don't wear white hoods. Uh, I'm not for annualized big budget games like that like they, yeah. they haven't ubisoft i've been turned off by for a long time oh i don't think i'm gonna buy another ubisoft game for a very long time for a number of reasons speaking of ubisoft will immortals phoenix rising what do you know <laughs> about this game i know it is very much a uh breath of the wild clone Yes, I saw That's about I, it. I just finally saw a little bit of it last night. I watched like a two seconds of a Twitch stream. Yeah. Uh it looks like Breath of the Wild with platforming. The platforming and more talking. Platforming, I was like, I didn't know there was a lot of platforming. This actually looks a little interesting. I might I so here's the thing. I mean, Breath of the Wild is still like maybe top three game you can buy on the Switch. Maybe yeah. number one, even it could be the best mm -hmm. game you could buy for the Switch if you don't own a Switch. Um, so why, in God's name, would I buy Ubisoft's version? <laughs> Ubisoft's version with version, which is probably filled with all the stereotypical Ubisoft crap that they've been throwing into their games for the past like ten years. Yeah, I heard that there's some some of that, like the tower like seeking and stuff but but to be fair that is also in breath of the wild <laughs> right but breath of the wild handles it in a very different unique way whereas every single ubisoft game handles it exactly the same now, now i will say uh ncm says because it's 34 dollars. it is on sale i've seen it on sale oh, this week nice. for a while also it has cross save so yes. you can pick up your save on a different console which i think yeah. is awesome it's it's available on other systems, yes. Uh, so listen, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. why wouldn't I play Breath of the Wild? Yeah, it's probably better. Uh, and I also never beat Breath of the Wild, so that <laughs> is why I don't have any inkl inkling to play Immortals: Phoenix Rising because it's a to Ubisoft fair, game. It's a Ubisoft's version of Breath of the Wild. To be fair, you don't beat breath of the wild at most you uh fight ganon yeah and that's it anybody who says they 100 percent completed breath of the wild is a liar or a psychopath yeah uh so this is going in can't comment uh yeah another similar game genshin impact now this oh. is breath of the wild with waifus and and it's a mobile gotcha game so it, it, yeah it's you you like it's free to play and you have it, there's like pay to win aspects and you like have to spend a lot of money through yeah. like little bite-sized microtransactions uh so yet again another game i have zero inkling to play i almost yeah. did though because it's multiplayer but apparently you have to really? dump a lot of time into it to get to the multiplayer the multiplayer yeah. sounded interesting but it wasn't interesting enough to get me to play it. Yeah. A lot of people were telling me about Immortals Phoenix Rising when it was first coming out going, oh, this person said it was good. Oh, this person said it was good. And then I looked and those videos were sponsored. They were very, they say they were sponsored. Right. That's why they liked the game. 
yeah. or or they just really liked Breath of the Wild. And uh, I mean, I thought Breath of the Wild was really good, but I don't yeah. need to play a distilled Ubisoft version. Anyway. So, uh, I mean, there's people who like Breath of the Wild, and then of course they're going to like a game like Immortals Phoenix Rising, you know? I yeah. like Mario, yeah. so of course I'm going to like Super Meat Boy Forever. Yeah. Super Meat Boy Forever came out this week. Yes. Uh, I haven't played it since the demo at PAX. How different is the final game? It's There were parts from the demo that I remembered. Really? So it's basically the same as the demo. Okay. So then in that case, uh, I would put it A. <laughs> so, okay. Well, he hold up. Reel it back. Um, it's really good. It's getting a lot of flack because it's uh, it's an auto scroller. Or, 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 it's an auto I, I don't want to say endless runner because it's not really endless. Um, it's an auto scroller and the levels are procedurally generated. They're pseudo procedurally generated. Like they they say that they're procedurally generated, but they're in chunks, right? So, uh, yeah, it's it's it. The way they're procedurally generated is weird. Um, but in a game like Super Meat Boy Forever, after a while, you end up holding right and the run button anyway. I mean, that's yeah. how I play Mario, especially if I'm playing the same level over and over again. Yeah. So the fact that it's an auto roll auto. Uh, runner doesn't really process like sometimes i end up holding right anyway in the game even though you don't have to um so it's only two buttons down and b for jump and punch uh down is to like duck and and dash or whatever um so i think i think it's amazing i think it's just as good as the first super meat boy my only problem is that it's twenty dollars and it's only four hours long so i'm almost done with it i didn't even realize i played wow. it, i played it in one session and i almost beat the whole yeah. thing um it is very hard um but it's a lot of fun and really rewarding when you finally get through it it's 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 I feel- it, it's hard but you get checkpoints very frequently so you could play the same part a thousand times yeah I'm I'm beginning to think that perhaps super meat boy forever was made for a different group of people in mind because like Super Meat Boy, the original, was more of a traditional uh, platformer, but it was you know no noted for its high difficulty. This game, I feel like, is meant for people who are used to that kind of game, that kind of high difficulty. Yes. Uh, where where you just where like you said, you just hold right and run, and you don't really think twice about it. And I don't think a lot of people are used to that. I think a lot of people are used to having control over your character when they move. Uh, this is not going to be that game for them. And it, it might take a long time for you to rewire your brain to think like that. Right. So, so uh, Sweet Potato Moose says, is Meat Boy Forever a mobile game, Endless Runner, and mobile games, right? Uh, it is actually not. It was a, I think it was originally developed as a mobile game back in yeah. 2013 or 14 when they started development on it um but they for whatever reason it's only out on epic store and switch right now it's coming to xbox mm-hmm. and playstation soon um but yeah for whatever reason it's not on mobile um it sounds like it would fit great on mobile i would probably rather it be on mobile because it's only four hours long and it's two buttons yeah. um but it's a great switch game i just i think ten dollars would have been a little more reasonable of a price um, it, it, if if there was a little more nuance to the gameplay, I'd say twenty dollars may it's maybe good, <laughs> but uh, it is yeah, an auto runner. But again, it's really fun, even though it's just two buttons. It, it it's it's fun and simple. Um, I mean, I think C is a little harsh. I'm gonna put it end of B. Okay. Uh, you think a, end of A from what you played the little bit of what you played i mean i really liked it <laughs> but consider twenty dollars for a short game like that true i don't like to so, yeah, you know, maybe put a price on things but twenty dollars is a lot for, yeah so maybe like high b yeah okay all right um what else do we got here fogs you know you didn't play fogs you don't play no fogs uh, not yet i haven't fogs. i haven't i haven't 
I haven't touched my Fogs yet. Fogs is great. It's a great multiplayer game. I barely ever played the single player. The single player is kind of like mm-hmm. Brothers of Tale of Two Sons where you have both thumbsticks uh-huh. and, and you yeah. control each head of the fog. Fogs is basically cat dog, but there's no cats, so it's dog dog. Yeah. It's one <laughs> it's this. You're this guy. So it's better. So it's better. Yeah, it's immediately better. It's like a yeah. little uh puzzle uh physics game it's like a physics puzzler uh it's very silly and very stupid uh but it's fun to if you're gonna play with somebody else um it's on every platform i think and i think it's on game pass so if you have xbox just play it on there uh it's really cool i'm gonna throw it on uh also at the end of b i'm gonna give it one up on meat boy i'm gonna give it one up on meat boy there you go um did you play avengers at all uh no but my wife actually got me that for christmas oh so you will eventually i will eventually play it yes um i don't know this is this is a weird one because like you hear all the bad stuff about it how it's we crashed (laughs) yeah yeah keep going you hear all the bad stuff about it like it's filled with microtransactions um it's trying so hard to be destiny um it's it's got a lot of like repeating uh segments to it like you go through endless hallways and fight endless wave of uh aim soldiers and whatnot um but there's also people who like really enjoy the game there's you know uh apparently there's a really good story campaign um there are genuine moments of like cool gameplay aspects to it so you know i i look forward to eventually sitting down and trying it for myself i'm never gonna touch the multiplayer straight up never gonna touch (laughs) it um because i I don't want to um but yeah i'm i'm willing to give it a shot especially uh you know i'm probably gonna play it after a point where they like you know deliver all the patches and stuff so 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 and i I got the ps4 version so i get to play a (laughs) spider-man so so i've i loved destiny I, I thought yeah. that game was awesome and I love the social mechanics of Destiny um, I have yet to find another game that uh, does that sort of looting and social aspect as well as well as Destiny I mean I th- I'm right. sure Diablo does but that's just not mechanically that's just not my type of game mm-hmm. um, and nobody thought this game was going to be that this, this game seems yeah. like a, a regular old like linear adventure game that that had when, social mechanics shoehorned in when i played the demo at new york comic-con there was no indication that it was going to be anything like that it was just seemed like you know a, a standard avenger style game that kind of played like a souls game where you have to like dodge roll out of the way so so, so ncm said borderlands yes that is a game that does destiny just as well as destiny uh Oh, was, so terrible! Before Dis- Destiny, <laughs> the, I loved the first two Borderlands games. I didn't play any of them since, uh, because uh, other things came out. Or yeah. also, we and... hate, we hate Gearbox. We don't like Gearbox. Yes, they're uh, run by a piece of shit garbage man. Yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna try it out. I don't think it's. I don't think I'm gonna hate the experience. Um. I just I hope that the all the uh, the multiplayer bullshit that they have in it doesn't interfere with the single player aspect of it. So I'll put it in NA. Yeah, I was expecting I will you to say, say though, it's not going to be good. <laughs> I, I'm willing I, to I, give to it me. A it shot. looks bad. It looks like I don't want any part of it. I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. I will say this though: I'm currently playing uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider now, uh, and. That came out like three years ago, whatever, so it won't be on this list. But the the first two modern Tomb Raider games, Tomb Raider 2013 and Rise of the Tomb Raider, were made by Crystal Dynamics. Crystal Dynamics didn't make Shadow of the Tomb Raider, or they didn't, you know, primarily primarily develop it because they went to go work on Avengers. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is being made by Idos Montreal, and it shows. It's not a bad game, but it is noticeably made by a different team. Mm-hmm. So I feel like maybe Crystal Dynamics should have 
stuck with their baby and somebody else made Avengers. Yes. So. Um, Valorant. I have not touched Valorant. It looks all right. I mean, every footage that I see of Valorant is either, uh, is either like very slow moving, like headshot, like yeah. clips. The game looks super slow. It, I mean, it's supposed to be like Counter Strike, so like I kind of get it. Um, I either see that or I see just people being horribly like racist or sexist in in uh, game chat, right? Which is just on par with these types of games. Um. I'd love to give it a shot. I don't think I'm going to like it that much. I'm going to throw it in. Can't comment. Yeah. Spider-Man uh, Miles Morales, I played for two seconds. Played like um, under I have not played that yet, but I'm probably going to put that in uh, B because much like Resident Evil 3, it is a very good expansion pack for another game I played two years ago that I really liked. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, so. it, it feels pretty much the same. Except you get a yeah. you get a thunder I, punch. I, I look. I'm probably gonna like. I'm definitely gonna get Miles Morales, and I'm definitely gonna play it, and I'm definitely gonna like it. But you know, calls it like a sees it. It's relatively short, so I might actually play through it. Uh, yeah, one of these days. Um, I was trying to get through some here. There's a lot that uh, we either can't. We we're, we're either completely disqualifying or that we don't want to talk about because we haven't played it. Oh, it's, I'll tell you right now, there's only one more game that I feel qualified talking about. And that is Streets of Rage 4? No. <laughs> what the hell? Although I that you just... that. No, I haven't played it yet. What the hell's wrong with you? You what always that? talk about it, but you want to play that game. Yeah, and I never got around to it, but you can put that in S rank right <laughs> out the bat. I can tell you that. Uh, no, the other, the other game is Cyberpunk. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. That, yeah. I, th- I think, I think that is going in E tier to be completely honest. Uh, is that too harsh? I uh, yeah, I think so. I think of the, all of the games here that we are qualified to talk about, it is the worst. Yeah. It is it's definitely the most disappointing. Mm-hmm. Because there were parts of that like there were moments when I'm playing and there were parts of it where I was getting really interested and I was like excited to see what was going to happen. But then it's just stupid shit. Like my, my automatic weapon like glitches out so bad that I can, I can see it like glitching out even when I'm not holding it in my view. Um, The fact that, you know, the buttons aren't responsive. The fact that some of the, you know, some of the, the shooting missions are kind of boring. The fact that uh, when I walked to a checkpoint, it wouldn't register, so I had to leave the room and walk back in a couple of times. It's it's <sighs> not just that the game is broken. Yeah, because I have I, I keep saying this. I haven't really experienced any bugs, any game breaking bugs. You know, like I, it, it's yeah. been kind of smooth for me. It's just this weird. There's just the all these weird like uh, like uh, like like decisions that that yeah that were made like. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of little things. Yeah. Like I, 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 and, but, and I've only played a few hours, um, but it, it the the thing that happens to me the most is I keep going to hack something. I, I like to play things stealth, so I keep going to hack something, and while I'm trying to hack it, I press the wrong button for hack, and I end up jumping, and then everybody looks at me, and I'm very slowly alerting everybody because it goes into yeah. slow motion when you're in the hacking menu. There's a lot of dumb stuff. There's there's a lot. Of, it, yeah. it, it, I, I don't even if it ran smoothly, I still don't think it would be that great of a game. Yeah, I also I really um I began not to like the way the missions were laid out. So at least like where I got up to, you know, it's supposed to be an open world game where you had your main story missions and then your side quests. Mm-hmm. But this game, once you finish your main story mission it automatically sets you up to go do the next one. But I have a backlog of side missions that I want to get to. But in order to do that, I have to go into my phone, find them, call the person or respond to their text. And that'll supersede the main story mission. And some of those side missions are important. Like 
getting a car because otherwise you got to walk your ass around night city or steal someone else's car you know uh, y- y- yeah uh, i i think that it could eventually be a good game like like that's the thing is that this this very low ranking is temporary like eventually yeah. it'll work on older platforms and will could actually play the game <laughs> yeah like, like i said like the reason why i'm playing shadow of the tomb raider right now is because i'm taking a break from cyberpunk because i'm waiting for them to fix it yeah and that sucks but i guess as of now like personally i would probably put in like c c or d but i don't i don't blame you for putting it at e so not just because of the game itself, but it's just because of the way like its release was handled overall. A, a lot of people are talking about how the the story is great and like that's what's saving it. I think I mean I've only played a little bit of it, but I think the dialogue is horrible. I the, I, the, I, I have zero connection to the story whatsoever from from what I've played so far. The story is fine, it's good, but I'm not seeing anything that separates it from any other games. Like I didn't get far into Deus Ex human revolution but i don't like i don't think that cyberpunk is doing anything any different from it i i think that people talking about the story are just trying to find ways to redeem the game you know like the story isn't as bad as how glitchy it is or the story isn't as bad as the gameplay loops so um i mean yeah like maybe it's d but i think again compared to everything else on this list everything else is better this is the worst game on the list yeah so and like there might have been games this year that uh um that that were worse than this that could be on the list but they're not yeah. because i would never consider them as game of the year but this is a game that's considered as a game of the year and it is the worst of the games that are considered to be a game of the year i mean to be fair it's the worst there are of the best there are people who consider it game of the year, not because it's a good game, but because it represents all the the bad stuff of gaming in 2020. Yes, like it's, all it's, your the, it's the game of the year as much as Hitler is the person of the year. That's what that's what the, some article said. Yes, I that was, was trying to say it. Article. I was trying to say it in a smarter way than that. <laughs> They should have said the same way that Trump was person of the year. Yes. I mean, it, they, depending they have, on who you ask, they're the same person. Hey, oh, nah, yeah, well, politics, we got them. Um, uh, I, I will say, and then we'll move on from cyberpunk. If you want to experience cyberpunk, wait, in a, in a non-broken way, uh, the original tabletop RPG a uh, rule book is currently available as a humble bundle and all of this expansion packs for only uh $15 for everything. So that is that game is guaranteed not to crash or glitch out on you cuz it's just paper. Robo Cope RoboCop Epic says I don't find it cringe. I actually like the characters that I have met and I am excited to see more of the story. It's not cringe. It's just bad. There's, there's a difference. <laughs> cringe. You can't just use cringe for everything. Uh, it's not what was shown at showcases, but the story is good. That's my opinion, at least. Uh, I, I honestly, I'm not that far into it. Uh, I'm only a few hours into it, but I, I have no idea what's going on, and I have zero connection to what's happening. Did you at least get to Keanu yet? No, I did not. Okay, I will say he is the best character. I mean, I just could imagine. Yeah. Uh, something a little a little to, to cleanse the palate. Will Astro's <laughs> Playroom is going right up to the top of a tier. Oh boy! Astro's Playroom is incredible. It is one of the yeah. best games that I played this year. Um, it, it's just a platformer, but. It, it, the the way it uses dual sense is really cool, and, and and there's a lot of really cool nostalgic nods to uh to PlayStation's past. Um, yeah, it's it's it feels like a 3D Mario game. It's like a well designed 3D Mario game. Uh, that's, well, that's only nice. a few hours long, and it's free with every PlayStation Five. And the graphics are beautiful. All of the characters are really cool. Um, 
all the animations are gorgeous. Um, there's a lot of little tiny Easter eggs that'll make you go, "Oh wow, I remember that." So it's it's yeah. it's one of the best games I played this year for sure. I I knew somebody who got a PS5 for Christmas, and he he was complaining about you know now he's got to go out and buy games for it. And I told him, actually, there's a game built into it, Astro's Playroom. Everybody seems to really enjoy it. Then I remembered. This is a guy who probably only plays Madden in Call of Duty. <laughs> so he's not going to touch Astro's no, Playroom. Not at all. He was also complaining that he has to, that they didn't give him a second controller. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, motherfucker, they never give you a second controller. You're older than me. You should know this. They haven't Act done, like you've been here before. They haven't done that since. Uh, well, first of all, what's he going to do with that other controller? What games yeah. are you going to play? Yeah, what I I would love to know like what couch co op game he's going to be playing. Yeah. Uh, second of all, what's the last system that came with two controllers like like stock? The action that set of NES. Yeah, that wasn't like a a bundle later on in the system's life. Right. So I don't know. Oh, everybody's saying the Switch. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. Yeah. It doesn't count. <laughs> um. Yeah, Astro's Playroom is amazing. There's, there's these little, like... Th I mean, there's... The, the 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 character of Astro, like, there's a bunch of little other versions of him running around. And throughout yeah. every level, there's... uh, There'll be little Astros um, acting out a scene from a popular PlayStation game. So there's, like, a little Metal Gear scene. There's, like, a little uh, Bloodborne scene. Oh. It's, like, it's really cool. Interesting. Um... Do you think Mario Kart Live deserves to be in the conversation? Uh, is that a video game? It you play it on the Switch and there you are like on... levels and stuff. But to it's me like a video AR game experience. Yeah, exactly. To me a video game happens entirely on the screen. Mm -hmm. It does like this is basically a really fancy remote control car. Yeah, but you so have I don't you have to look at the screen. You can't play it while looking at the RC car. You have, but the the world that the RC car interacts with is the real world. Mm -hmm. Like your, it interacts with your actual kitchen floor. Well, not po well. Pokemon recreation. Pokemon Go is a real Pokemon Go is a game that you have to go to actual locations. But the primary uh, primary gameplay experience is still on the screen. Yeah, same thing with this. You have to look at the screen. You can't look at the at the car. Or if you do, you you're have to a look at the screen. But it's it's entirely contingent on of like the physical space more so than Pokemon Go, as I would say. Even though you have to go to the physical, place even though you in have the world. to go to the physical. <laughs> yes, I think they're the same in that regard. I I I disagree. <laughs> It is a great game, though. I I should have let you. I should bring it around one time because it is really fun. Um, bring bring it, yeah, bring it next time you bring Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> it's really cool. Uh, I did not include this on my conversation in my next video of Switch games. I didn't include mm -hmm. this because it is an AR experience, and I ran out of time. Honestly, I have I had. I didn't have enough time to talk about it. Uh, I have a whole right. video on Mario Kart Live, and it is great, and I think everybody should try it if they're given the chance. It's $100, and it's probably really hard to find right now. Um, but it is one of the best gaming experiences I had this year. I don't know. Maybe end of B. I'm putting it end of B. I think it deserves to be on the list, Will. <laughs> all right. All right. Fine. But I strongly disagree with this. Um. The only thing, the only, you know what? Uh, now I'm having second thoughts because <laughs> the actual game part, like the levels, are cool, but they really don't mean anything. Like it's it's just kind of right. like uh like they, they just throw like element like like there's there'll be different power ups on different worlds and and like uh like they look really cool, but it's kind of just like a visual flair. Um. I'll throw it on C tier. Gadget Mike's right. I'm throwing it on C tier. <laughs> um, what else do we got here? Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I did not play. I have a feeling I would Same. like that game, but I didn't play it. So sorry about it. I played the first one. It was good. 
uh, clubhouse games, Will. <laughs> this is sad. This is sad because, I mean, it's just a bunch of tabletop games. It's not like the most amazing thing ever. But Right, but the, it's also one of the most popular games on the Switch this year. It plays really nice. Um, yeah. There's some weird, like, design decisions. Like, um, I forgot, AJ, what were some weird designs? There was, like, things we couldn't do that I was, like, really mad about. Um, oh, you can't, it, when you're playing blackjack, you can't, uh, like, sp you can't double down or something. Like, there's something where you can't split. I don't think you could split. One of those things. Weird. There's, like, a weird, there's little weird things like that. Like, like every game is not fleshed out as perfectly as you would hope, because there's 51 of them. It kind of yeah. feels like a lot of, like, a collection of Flash games. That's what it kind of feels like. Uh, it's good and it's fun playing with friends. That's really why you get this to have just a bunch yeah. of board games to play with friends. Um, I think the most interesting thing about this game is that it's going to be higher on the list than Cyberpunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that says a lot about, you know, the care that went into uh, Clubhouse games and a lot about the care that did not go into the release of Cyberpunk. Like, I... I had a lot more fun with Clubhouse games playing that with friends than I did playing Cyberpunk by myself. Yeah. I, I'm going to put it in D. Like, it's great, and I think if you want to have a good party game to play with people, you should buy it. Um, yeah. I just think, compared to everything else, uh, it's not exactly a, a work of art. It's just, a, it's just a bunch of, you know, <laughs> just a bunch of Clubhouse games. Trying to adjust my seat because my, my small on my back is like not good <laughs> let's crack you back i think a massage is what i need <laughs> in the you're trying to adjust your your secret labs batman chair yes you got oh, with with the adjustment dial on the side to give yourself lumbar support mine's all the way yep. out that's all the way out my i just turned mine all the way in to see if that was uh that will help you might have to just put the back straight up or something yeah um, all the rest of the games on here are games that I have actually played and I feel qualified right. to talk about. Didn't Warzone come out last year? Everybody keeps saying that. It did not. It came out this year. It, it was part of Modern Warfare, but that came out last year. This was a standalone expansion to Modern Warfare. That is oh, now, he's right. That is now its Mar own game. March 10th, 2020. So we'll talk about Warzone. The Warzone is right. my game of the year. It is S tier. Wow. I played that maybe more than any other game that came out this year. Uh, it's incredible. It's just a battle royale, but I love the Call of Duty mechanics so much that uh, that in a battle royale format is just the perfect storm for me. Yeah. Um, the last update, I'm still trying to get used to. I don't know how much I like it. The guns are uh, a little crazy and I haven't unlocked them. So I'm kind of just getting destroyed every time I'm playing. Um, it's also a game that you need to play with other people. If you're playing alone, it, uh, the 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 solo queue is terrible. If you're just a team of one, uh, the the game just isn't built for playing as one person. You have right. if you're playing by yourself, you have to get self revives, and you they they, they don't sh so in the game will. You have to get a bunch of money to buy your loadout. So that's right. your guns with your attachments, and you also get your Call of Duty perks. Um, there's the solo queue, duos, trios, and quads, depending on how many people you have on your team. The game doesn't scale with... Uh, like like the price, the price of things like your loadout don't scale depending on what how many people are on your team. So in mm -hmm. solos, a loadout is still $10,000. And in quads, where you have a team of four, the loadout is still $10,000, which is ridiculous. I think if you're playing as right. one person, it should be a lot cheaper. And you should start off with self-revives. Other than that, if you're playing with other people, if you have a team of two or three or four people, the game is amazing. Uh, it requires that sort of call out and stuff. And I think a year like this where I'm required to stay at home and I can only connect with my friends over video games, this has been the perfect game. Right. Um, 
So that is why that is S tier for me. It's 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 the best battle royale I've ever played for sure. And a part of that is because every battle royale is freaking a beta. And this game has a lot of problems too. It's glitchy as hell. Uh, but they they're pretty good at fixing it. It also has a a really bad cheater problem. There's a lot of cheaters in the game. Would you say COD regained its cool factor that it had early on? Says Edible Gym Sock. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> cool fact. I mean, it's it's back in popularity now. It's it's a uh, it's been above Fortnite a lot in the Twitch directory. It I might just live above Fortnite now. Fortnite's kind of been dying off. <sighs> and that's why they're spending so much money on Mandalorian and Batman True. and things like that. Louis BC says, I feel like any battle royale is much better in a group. You can play regular multiplayer on your own, but I've always had a better experience on a team in royales. I've been playing Warzone a little bit solo, um, and I feel like it could be good solo, but uh, it's not built for it, and they haven't really changed anything about it. Every once in a while, they have different game modes that they that they have temporarily. Like one of them was, uh, they had a, uh, oh, buyback solos. So, uh, if you just you just need enough money in your pocket and then you're automatically you automatically come back if you have over four thousand dollars in your pocket you automatically come back i think that is something that should just be the solo or they should just give you a self-revive every time you spawn in solos um but yeah i i, I think it definitely has its problems but it's been the game that i've loved the most that came out this year so that is my s tier uh Another battle royale that came out this year is Fall Guys. Hey, you haven't played Fall Guys? No, it's installed on my PS4, uh, but that's as far as I got. <laughs> uh, it was very glitchy when it first came out. It's also one of those games that's like purposely like jank, like the controls are like a little wonky. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. It's it's a battle royale platformer, similar to like those like a uh, Ninja Warrior or what's that other thing? Uh, most extreme uh, eliminations Takeshi's castle yeah those types of like game shows it's like that um it's a lot of fun it's another one that's more fun with other people even though a team doesn't really do anything it's just fun to have people like you know mm -hmm. to, to to talk to while you're going through the levels uh so this is a battle royale that you can play by yourself um it's a lot of fun i think it's great i think it was a great game that came out this year uh I might throw it in S tier also. Oh, there you go. I, I think I think it. They've been updating it pretty well. Uh, I think it needs a little more work. I I I. Uh, I mean, it is an indie game. Mm -hmm. Um. So I I'd, I'd say end of S tier. Yeah. I think it was unique enough that it, that it it throws it up to end of S tier. Um. Fallen Kayaker, I'm sorry to hear that, says, nice, it it was, de no, that that's not the one I wanted to read. Hot Pancakes is Paper Mario for A tier. And so let's talk about Paper Mario. I didn't like it. <laughs> I feel like you're not alone in that because I feel like, once again, the Paper Mario stands did not like this one. So it reminded me a lot of so I played through all of Super Paper Mario and I really liked that back in the day. Um, but I think I just liked the world and the characters and I kind of felt that here too. I liked mm -hmm. the world and the characters. But the game mechanics weren't really doing it for me and there's it's a long game and there's so much else that came out that I just, I just didn't want to invest the time in it. So, right. so, so like, it was good. Um, and if I didn't have much else going on, I would probably play through the whole thing, but, uh, and, and I would probably think it was good, but I can't do just good. I need like great games, you know, and this mm -hmm. just wasn't that, uh, the game, the, the, the combat was kind of like for, for like the first, like two or three hours. No, for the first three hours, yeah, it was the first like whole stream that I did. Yeah. You basically can't get hit. <laughs> like it's so easy. The combat's so easy that yeah. uh it's just like impossible to get hit. Um so it was just yeah, it was there's really like there's really not a lot to it. 
so right. to the actual gameplay other than the world is cute I'll, i'm gonna give it bottom of c <laughs> after mario kart live it was good but uh there was many other things that deserve to be above it right like for example let's do hyrule warriors age of calamity okay this game was really good i like the game mechanics in this i like having have the demo for this i like having the demo is great everybody should play the demo demo is awesome uh it's very long too i think it's like two hours uh, Hyrule Warriors. Um, I do have the demo for this. It's a Zelda game, but it's it. Uh, it I mean, it's like a. I don't want to say it's like a beat 'em up, but it kind of is. You're just kind of murdering like huge hordes of enemies. Um, the frame rate. Hack and is, slash is the yes. proper term. Hack and slash. Uh, you basically. I mean, the 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 frame rate is horrible. It dips like a lot, but you kind of forgive it. Like it doesn't really, it's not like you're frigging playing a competitive shooter, you know, like where you need the frames. Right. Like it's, it's, you're just mashing kind of. So, uh, Impa was the best character. Impa is really cool. You get this like cool, like uh-huh. Naruto type of like a uh, multiplier where you like have like nine of you Yeah, that get to like frigging murder a bunch of, you do a lot of damage with that. It's really good. Um, I didn't play the whole thing. It's kind of a prequel, but like it also is like an alternate universe type of prequel. It's weird the way it works. Yeah. Um, so that kind of like sours it a little bit for me because if it was like a full, uh, the story's good and it's it's great if you really like Breath of the Wild. It gives you some more insight on what happened in the past. Um, I would have liked it to be an actual prequel. Um, so it's good and i think everybody should play the uh demo and then you could see if you'll actually like it but i guess because i feel like Mm -hmm. oh go go ahead i was gonna say i I guess because of the frame dips i gotta put it at the end of b i'm putting it at the end of b i was gonna say like because i don't hate like those dynasty war style games i actually kind of like you know the run out into a big field and just try to destroy as much as you can you know there's something cathartic about it um I know it's that they made like a thousand Dynasty Warrior games and they're all the same, but the Hyrule Warriors kind of like revived the series. Uh, and this one actually looks really good. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. But maybe I'll try to play the demo tonight. It, it is really good. I think you'll very much like the demo. And, and you know, the demo's long enough and the demo save file carries over to the main game. So you'll, That's be, nice. you'll be able to tell if you're going to enjoy the game from the long demo. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, that's why I didn't buy Streets of Rage 4s because it's $25. You don't have a code for that? No. You said you were going to get me a code and you never did. <laughs> I haven't checked my email since March, Will. So I'll have to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, so end of B. I'm putting Hyrule Warriors. All right. Two more games left, Will. Got Super Mario right. Brothers 35 and we got Animal Crossing. We know that Animal Crossing is the Nintendo Switch game of the year. So let's talk about Super yeah. Mario Bros. 35. <laughs> Super right. Mario Bros. 35 was my favorite game that I played on the Switch. Okay. However, as game of the year 2020, I will put it behind Astro's Playroom in A tier. Okay. So, Super Mario Bros. 35 is the original Super Mario Brothers, which is an amazing game. And already makes it one of the best games of the year. Because it's Super Mario Brothers. So the baseline is there for a great game. (laughs) However, uh, it's it's sort of a battle royale. So it's you against 34 other people. It's kind of like Tetris 99 where every time you kill an enemy, uh, it gets thrown to your opponent's screen. So by the end of the game, right. you have hordes of enemies on your screen. So you're playing through a regular Mario level, but with a million enemies. Uh, the the levels that you play through are sort of random. Like you get to vote on what levels are going to be in the queue in the beginning. So those get right. randomized. Uh, and if you get levels with warp pipes, you can kind of you get get a little bit of choice for your path so you end up kind of 
trying to choose levels that will give you a lot of coins so you get more power-ups because you can roll through power-ups you can get random yeah. you could pay for random power-ups and levels that have harder enemies so that you can send harder enemies to your opponents and once you get towards the end of the, the the match things get really heated and it's like you versus one other person and you can see their screen mm -hmm. in a little tiny corner and you're like just try not to mess up while and see where they are at the same time because any false move means you lost the match. So it takes the original Super Mario Bros. to like a whole other level. You have to play it a completely different way. And if you're good at the original Super Mario Brothers, it's a fun and interesting twist. If you're bad at the original Super Mario Brothers, you're not going to like this game at all. So uh, I already love the original Super Mario Brothers, and this gave me new fun things to do in it. Uh, I kind of wish there was more to do in it like that like I wish that there was some more updates maybe some more levels I wish that it was a little bit more like Mario Royale which was the fan game that came out last year right because I loved that uh, maybe they can add a mode like that also this game ends in March 31st 2021 the game is just going to be deleted forever yeah uh, which is sad which I mean maybe I should make it give it should i give it points off for not being a game anymore after march 31st yes i would say yes because i think it's ridiculous that they're just gonna take it away from you and you'll never be able to play it again uh but it is free uh, on switch online it's does free. that give it points uh, uh, yeah a big problem with games is preservation that's always been a problem with games the ability to play games uh from one generation in another generation like you know it's it's very hard to play uh something like the original streets of rage let's say you, you know you either have to hunt down a genesis or you have to find it in a random collection um and something like this taking away super mario brothers 35 within the console's life cycle that's that's terrible that's that's basically what konami did with pt right um, and I and I don't approve of that. Well, do you think that's worthy of taking points off for a game like PT because it just doesn't exist anymore? At, at least the, the thing with PT was that came that decision came later. That decision came after like months of conflict between Kojima and Konami. This was premeditated, right? Mario okay. 35 was like, here's a game. You're not going to play it pretty soon. You're going to be able to play it pretty soon, but play it while you can. You're right. Nerds. That, that was kind of built into the development is that the game's going to yeah. disappear. So, all right, I'll put it at the end of A because of that. Yeah. Still a great game, though. Everybody should play it. It's free if you have a Switch online. And it, yeah. and you won't be able to play it in three months. Uh, Somebody, Gadget Mike, said it's funny seeing Super Mario Bros. 35 above demon souls and the last of us 2 <laughs> oh i put it behind demon souls so there you go it's between demon souls and the last of us part two yeah <laughs> animal crossing yeah this is gonna be another weird looking one animal crossing is the best switch game in 2020 mm -hmm. i didn't enjoy my time with it as much as i enjoyed super mario bros 35 but i did i kind of enjoyed playing it with friends and stuff yeah and the, and the collect-a-thon aspect to it um I'm going to put it in S tier behind Call of Duty Warzone, <laughs> but in front of Fall Guys. Uh, Fall Guys, I enjoyed. Hello? No, I'm, 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 I'm having a stroke. I'm thinking. I'm breaking my brain okay. now. Because I think <laughs> Sorry, Animal like Crossing deserves to be out. in front of Fall Guys. However, I think I might have enjoyed my time with the Fall Guys because that's my type of game. I enjoyed so, I enjoyed my time with Animal Crossing. It's just that I felt like it was it was me making the game fun, you know, kind of like a Minecraft right. situation, like you make your own fun in it. And that's yeah. that was my concern with the game, like when we were demoing it and stuff, I was like I feel like I'm not having a connection with this game. I just feel like you just kind of run around and do dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. But really the game is made by you making your world and going to explore your friends' worlds and doing dumb things with your friends. So, uh, 
you need to be able to make your own fun and and get to the point where you can make your own fun and and, and stuff um it, it it's a hard game to explain why it's so good because like um it's sort of like the pokemon phenomenon for me like i don't like games like pokemon i don't like rpgs you know mm. but for whatever reason i'm enthralled by the cute little characters and i like pokemon because it's pokemon <laughs> <laughs> So Animal Crossing is the same thing. I would never play a game like this in my life. But for whatever reason, it's Animal Crossing. And I like the cute characters. I like all of the stuff you can collect. It, it's It's got cool stuff. I liked building out my island. I liked making it look more like a city. Like this is the Bob Island. Um, The Bob Island. There was a, there's a lot of horrible UI elements. Like the UI mm, is like, horrible. Like any Nintendo game. Yeah. Uh, it's like somebody in the chat says the online is terrible. It the the way the the connection isn't terrible. The way the online works is terrible. Every time you want to, so they, there could be eight people on an island, but every time somebody enters the island, the whole gameplay has to stop and has to go through a whole animation of a plane coming in, and it takes like thirty seconds every single time. So if you want eight people mm-hmm. on the island, you have to go through that thirty second thing eight times or seven times. Yeah, it's it's horrible. But for whatever reason. You you don't care because it's Animal Crossing. You got all these cute characters. You get to exchange all these stupid little items. You get to catch bugs with each other. I don't know why that's fun, but it works <laughs> and makes it more fun than Fall Guys and The Last of Us Part Two for some reason. Yeah. Uh, also, though, it's a, it was a cultural phenomenon. It hit right when right after quarantine was like well involved. Um, so- that's what I was gonna say. Like, I have not played Animal Crossing. I'm probably not gonna play Animal Crossing, but. I can't deny the impact that this game has had, not just at the beginning of the pandemic, but as it's gone on. Like, this is the game that kept people together more so than pretty much any other game, with the exception of Among Us. Right. So, for that and that alone, it would at least get an A ranking. But given all the other stuff about the game, I can absolutely see it getting pushed to S ranking. Yeah. Also, like, this is the type of game that, like, like, I know people who don't play many games, but this is one of the games that they get, like, there were people who played, who only ever played A New Leaf on the 3DS. They they just played the hell out of that game. They had hundreds of hours in that one game. And they're the same thing with this. This made them get Switches and stuff. So Mm -hmm. this was basically Nintendo's only huge AAA IP this year. They didn't have, I mean, they had Paper Mario, but that didn't really, that wasn't really that huge. Hyrule Warriors is like a B side. Um, so for what this is like the only big major AAA game that they had this year, and it had a huge impact. It's still topping charts every month. Yeah. Um. Yanda Haas is Pikmin 3. That was a that's a friggin' port, dude. That's a We're Wii U there. port, bro. Um so all that rolls into Animal Crossing being S tier. And again, like it feels it feels weird because I feel like I made my fun, but I wouldn't have done it without Animal Crossing, you know? It's, yeah. it's like the Minecraft thing, like you wouldn't have been able to have those types of experiences like you do in Minecraft without Minecraft. So yeah, uh, it is currently the third best-selling game on the Switch behind Among Us and Mario Kart Eight. Wow, Mario still. Kart Eight still. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised Among Us is up there too. I didn't think I'm not. I, I mean, I know Among Us is huge, but on console, I didn't expect it to be. As I think huge. it's because you know people have heard of Among Us. You know, people who have played Among Us like it and they want to play it on more systems. I think the people who haven't played Among Us yet and are primarily Switch players want to get in on the action. I think it's it's just like a perfect crossroads for... Also, yeah, it's five bucks. So here we go. We have our... This is it. This is our tier list of best yep. 2020... Or any game, every game that came out this year that we thought was deemed worthy of talking about. Uh, we have a lot yes. that we deemed we couldn't comment on because we didn't play that yes. many. Uh, but you know what? For a human to play this many games, I think is come on, guys, give me some credit here. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, there's there's not enough hours in the day. Yeah. 
Uh, I talk more about games than I do play them. Yeah. So S tier, I'm not going to read through all of them, but S tier, you got Warzone, Animal Crossing, Fall Guys, and A tier, you got Astro's Playroom, Tony Hawk's, Pro Skater 1 and 2, Demon Souls, and Super Mario Bros. 35. <laughs> uh, so you can make one of these for yourself. Uh, I'm going to save this, and save and download. What do I do? Tier list, title of tier list. Wolf Den Game Games of the Year 2020. I'm not adding a description. You must finish okay add a description what should the description be will uh the only game of the year tier list that matters i don't like that the only game of the year <laughs> tier list with sweaty hands okay you can't finish creating the list before saving it oh my god dude i'm hitting save Oh, do I have to say... What do I have to save? What do you want from me? You did finish creating this. Did we... Oh, s s no, that's the button I'm hitting. Save. Oh, here it is. Okay. Download image. Is there a way... Uh, like, I wanted to save all the stuff that's in it. Can I share? Oh, yeah, I want to share the template. Let's see. Here you go. This is this is what I really wanted to save. This right. This shit here. There you go, guys. It's in the chat. Make your own. Share it using the hashtag Wolfden Tier List. No. Wolfden twenty twenty. There you go. Hashtag Wolfden twenty twenty, and we'll look at them. Maybe we'll look at them next week. Who knows if we'll remember. Uh. So there you go. If you have any problems, leave it in the comments below. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, don't forget, this is our list. You can make it again. You can make your own. If yeah. you got a problem with our list, make your own. Do your own. Remember, these outlets like IGN and GameSpot and whatever have a committee of people who are paid to play games all day. <laughs> not yeah. all. Well, not all day, but they're paid to play the games. And they're all, they're all given different games to play for their job. We are two people yeah and only i'm playing all the games here and i have to play nintendo right. switch games because that's my job <laughs> um anyway what happened while we were in uh in tier list land we uh, had we had here. uh we had chup xp with 300 bits we had dismantle os with 19 months of subs thank you very much we got Chup XP gifting a sub to Tomatachen. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. We got Drew Suave with six months. Hello, guys. Hello. How are you? Good to see you. Chup XP with 200 bits. Love your work. Keep keep the hard work. Thank you. I'll try to Thank keep it. I'll, I'll keep it for safekeeping. Jump bag with 11 months. Hello. 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 <laughs> Jess the Vagabond says, I definitely watched people play more games than I played myself. I've definitely spoken about games more than I've played them. Yeah. I've thought about games more than I've played them. <laughs> well, what's this? Nintendo rejects a Kanye video game? Explain. So I so here's the thing. I you know, I I'll be honest with you, Bob. I sort of wasn't uh keeping track of all the news that was going on in the gaming world this week. So, um, so I just so earlier today I just quickly ran back through several different websites to try and find good, interesting stories from the past week. Then I remembered, oh, it was Christmas. Nothing happened. Nothing. So happened. these are these are just the bottom of the barrel uh, video game stories that I could find that were moderately interesting. One of them was apparently Kanye West walked right up to Nintendo and wanted to make a game, and they said no. <laughs> I don't blame them. Former president of Nintendo of America, Reggie fils -Aimé, has revealed that he had to politely decline an offer to work with Kanye West on a video game concept due to the amount of other projects that were currently in development at the company. As reported by Nintendo Everything, uh, Reggie shared the story on his Talking Games with Reggie and Harold podcast, which is raising money for the New York Video Games Critics Circle nonprofit uh, mentoring work. And he said that the meeting happened at an E3 many years ago. 
Kanye visited the Nintendo booth that E3 and was even able to spend a bit of time with Shigeru Miyamoto. He then requested a meeting with Reggie, and the two ended up meeting up at one of Kanye's offices in Calabasas, California. Uh, part of it was talking about what he was up to, Reggie explained. He was experimenting with a piece of video game content. He wanted reactions to it. He came out and says, I want to work with Nintendo. He had so many different projects. We had so many different projects going on at Nintendo. The possibility of doing something with Kanye just wasn't there. And so I had to find a way to politely decline this opportunity to work with him. I told him, Kanye, you don't want to work with us because we're tough. We're hard. All we do is push for the very best content. We would not be... We would not be the type of partner you would want to work with. And he Damn. looks at me and says, he looks at me and he says, Reggie, you're exactly the type of partner I want because of that reason. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Reggie said that not only was he was the meeting interesting, Kim Kardashian West was also there. While the project never saw the light of day, Reggie and Nintendo both felt that Kanye was such a passionate, has such a passion for the video game space and he's a creator. Uh, Kanye's history with games extends back beyond this one meeting as he revealed he was working on a game titled Only One that would have players gu guiding his mother Donda to the highest gates of heaven by holding her to the light. He announced his project in 2015. Little news about it has surfaced since then. What the hell? I was thinking like Kanye's got so much going on. It sounds like he just, and he's hyper rich. It sounds like he just yeah wanted to go for like the best name in video games and be like hey make my yeah. game make my game well, don't I you know who i am i'm kanye. i am a, a genius <laughs> i'm a genius i'm the smartest person in music and uh, therefore i'm the smartest person in video games i know how to make video games reggie make my video game with me make my video game with, with me <laughs> I don't. I mean, so, it seems like you know, it's, he already wanted to make a video game. See, maybe he does have good ideas. I don't know, but I, I, I don't. I don't that, think Nintendo is the way to go, buddy. I think they're no, pretty good no, on Nintendo, their own. Nintendo is not the type of company that would team up with a celebrity. Number one, number two, like Reggie said, Nintendo is a has a very strict um, setup. They have a very strict amount of games that they work on. They have a very strict uh, development. Uh, timeline. I don't think some lunatic, uh, w you know, who made 808s and heartbreaks could come mm -hmm. in and just start yelling demands and stuff. And you know, Nintendo would not be able to accommodate that because that's not how they work. Right. I, I, if, I, I think any other company, like an EA or a Ubisoft yeah, if, or an Activision, like they would be or they, Activision. They're the people they would, you want to work with. They would jump at the opportunity for this. Ubisoft has a lot of indie developers under their wing that would like yeah probably be good for something like this i mean even ea like something like unraveled or um a way out True. that was them True. so yeah i don't nintendo's not they're not nintendo they don't need you <laughs> they don't need kanye yeah. yeah nintendo dodged a bullet there i say um i'm just happy that people are finally coming around to my way of thinking in that Kanye was never good. He was always a bad musician. Uh, and now that people are finally realizing he's a bad person, it, you know, it's, it's never too late to say Will was right. I don't know if I've ever heard a full Kanye song. So I can't, I, I can't spe I can't say really. I, I, I'm sure I've he had, had good heard, songs. I've heard, I have heard bad Kanye songs. Yes. Not not all the way through, but I'm sure he's yeah. had some great even songs. Uh, maybe I know the ones I've heard the the so called good to great Kanye songs. I'm just like this is not. Oh wait, I have heard a whole good. one. The one that Zach Galifianakis did the video for. That's a good song. <laughs> Do I know that one? The the oh. Uh... I'm not about to sing it. The one that Zach Galifianakis did a Funny or Die video for, where he's on like the farm and he's like got his shirt off and shit. I don't know. I I know the one that uh, Seth Rogen did a video for. Well, there's that one Franco. too. There's that one yeah. too. Yes, that was a good one. Uh oh, -uh, you can't tell me nothing. That song. <laughs> That's a good song. That one I don't know. 
Uh, maybe maybe I'm just not singing it as good. Maybe that's why. Anyway, um, we got Twitch Prime from the Z4M4. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. This man has multiple great albums. Stop capping. Will, what's your favorite album of all time? Is it of all time? Is it All Hollows EP from uh, AFI? <laughs> No, but that is probably my favorite AFI album of all time. Uh, of all time, this is going to date me because, uh, again, I'm an old man, but uh, probably Weezer's Blue album. That is why Will doesn't like Kanye West, guys. Can we, uh, Will's not, Will doesn't speak for every man by saying that Kanye West is bad. Will just, Will, it's just not in his taste. Am I right? Oh, that's not true because I do like. To be clear, I do like hip hop. I do enjoy my fair share of rap music. Um, it's just that Kanye is nowhere near the type of hip hop I like. Right. Exactly. So, you know, just... I like Jay Z. I like uh, I like a lot of old school stuff, like Run DMC. I love the Beastie Boys, uh, Public Enemy. I like, you know, I. Uh, what came out? Kendrick Lamar has got some really good stuff. It, I love Busta Rhymes. This, it's 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 like why I would put Final Fantasy VII on like C tier. <laughs> <laughs> Just not not my game. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hey, did you, did you watch this video, Will? The Work Boy. I did. I watched the whole thing, and then it I was, watched all the articles come out. It was fantastic. Yeah. That was a great. So there's a. Uh, it's on the Did You Know Gaming channel, right? Yes, it's on the Did You Know Gaming channel, but I forgot the name of the actual show. Um, but uh, oh, uh, Game History Secrets, hosted by Liam Robertson, hunted down uh, the work boy. So for those of you who don't know, um, back like 28 years ago, 30 years ago, work began on a peripheral called the work boy, which is literally just a keyboard that you plugged into your original Game Boy and you could do work shit on it. Like it had a word processor and a calendar and a phone book and a, and a calculator and all this other like business type stuff that you can do on your Game Boy. Um, for various reasons, it was canceled and never officially released. Um, however, there is one working prototype of the keyboard and thanks to the uh the giga leak from earlier this year the, the infamous leak where a bunch of nintendo content was revealed on the internet the software was also revealed as well so liam robertson got access to the working keyboard workboy prototype and in conjunction with the software that leaked earlier in the year got it working like this he was is, able to pretty much play a near final build of the Workboy. This is the only Workboy that exists today. He got it from the mm -hmm. head of the company that worked on the Workboy. Um, yes. And yeah, the, the, no software exists except for in that leak, which was a build that yeah. was sent to Nintendo for like clarification. So it was a near final build. Um, yes. So he got it, it's a fantastic story that we kind of just spoiled. <laughs> but yeah. But uh, no, he got to. I, I mean, let's be real here. This doesn't change anything in the scheme of video games. <laughs> but no, no. I love weird like uh, gaming peripherals like this, and I love uh, gaming history stories like this. And and this is a great yeah. like in depth and uh, like a like a history of this product and this project and uh why it went wrong and why it didn't work out and and how it ended up working and how it could have potentially changed things yeah but ultimately failed to yeah i think what's interesting uh he and he brings this up when when the software leaked people were trying to you know emulate it and there was a lot of like bugs and glitches on it but when liam robertson used that same software with the actual hardware he didn't experience any of those problems. So so it kind of, it looked like it locked you out of a lot of aspects. And, and yeah. it, it, the hardware was, I mean, the software was designed to work with this hardware and it was basically unusable without it. Yeah. Um, and people didn't know that. 
until you know he got to friggin' Just plug it in. So he was literally he's literally yeah. the only one who could use the software because he has yeah. the keyboard. Um I thought it was interesting uh that in the video they talk about how they didn't even think there was a cartridge at all. They thought that the software came from the yeah. keyboard itself, from the link cable. I yeah, I, I think that because was there was like there was no clear indication that there would be a game cart that they have to put into the Game Boy. Yeah, but like, wouldn't you think? Like, I mean, I don't, I don't it, think there's a game that exists that works through a link cable. Right. Well, yeah, from our advanced 2020 minds, yeah, that makes all the sense in the world. But you got to remember back then, video games were basically just witchcraft. Nobody yes. knew how they worked. <laughs> So I, I put the link in the chat to that video. You should watch it. It's very, it's yeah, very good. It's, it. it's like a half an hour, but it, but it's, it's worth it. It's a fantastic uh, uh, look at that peripheral. Yeah. Um. Last article we have here. Sony yeah. has seven TV shows and three movies. Murder me. Yeah. Sony Pictures chairman and CEO Tom. Uh, sorry, Tony Vincen Vincenzo Quera not saying that again, uh, <laughs> has revealed that his studio is currently developing seven TV shows and three movies based on PlayStation games. As reported by Media Post, oh my God. Tony announced that uh, the news while talking about Sony's idea to have much more integration between all of his entertainment properties, including PlayStation. We have no specific plan yet, he said, but we have a program within the company called One Sony. We'll be seeing a lot more integration of Sony companies together. Uh, he then discussed that Sony is developing three movies and seven TV shows based on PlayStation games, but it didn't go as but didn't go so far as to say if the Uncharted movie and the Last of Us TV series were included in that count. I'd imagine they are. Uh, Tony also discussed whether or not Sony will be following the example set by Warner Brothers and potentially switch to day and date release model for theaters and streaming services. I don't think we'll be do we'll be in the day and date release business. I think the economic model for very big budget movies requires the window, the windows that are in the flow now and we'll continue with that. We think 30 day windows are probably uh, the best. It will allow us to uh atomize our marketing over the two windows, theatrical and home entertainment, so we think that's the way to go. I don't understand how they could have seven TV shows and three movies based on Sony video games. That's so many. And we don't even know if yeah. the one is working yet, Uncharted. <laughs> like, make sure that yeah. works good or, before we go yeah. nuts here. Same thing with uh, The Last of Us. That's not even filming yet. That's just in development. Right. So... Uh yeah. Uh, remember, video game movies and TV shows have uh historically been bad. Yes. So they lean so on the bad for Sony side. to yeah. So for Sony to just go all in on uh what is it ten projects total is, is very ballsy. It is very ballsy. Yeah. Uh well I'm interested. I'll I'll see the Uncharted movie. Fine, whatever. Uh, I think it'll be uh, at at. Uh, at I think it'll be at least okay. I don't think it'll be bad. Uh, yeah, I'll see it, but then I'll, like, I'll just be like, I could be watching Indiana Jones. <laughs> I could be watching Romancing Stone. I could be watching all these movies that Uncharted ripped off. Well, after all that, after a long night of video games, do you know what time it is? Is it Tweet of the Week time? Tweet of the Week! Tweet of the Week! Tweet of the Week! Yeah, buddy. It's sweet of the week time. Uh, I forgot to do it last week. And Underscore is giving me shit. Underscore, listen. This was the first tweet of the week that I forgot of of the Wolf Den podcast, okay? In how, in how many years, including Wolf Den Live? So, no, we're not including Wolf Den Live because I forget okay. all the time in Wolf Den Live. <laughs> not. Uh... So last week's tweet of the week was supposed to be from Murit K, who says, Boppin is a puzzle game about throwing things. One of the two main characters is named Yeet. The game came out in 1992. Wow. There you go. Is this where Yeet came from? 
or is it a coincidence well I, I mean i feel like it must be but perhaps unbeknownst to us this is the source this is it this is the first known go. this is the first published uh the first time yeet has been used in that way let's just say that history history was found here uh what's this oh this is from not toxic lol this is this week's tweet of the week right. girls with glasses are so fine bruh come here baby girl no over here <laughs> that's a good that's a good little <laughs> chuckle that's funny guys that reminds me of uh the line in Van Halen's Beautiful Girls where at the end, David Lee Roth is like, come here, baby, what's your name? What's your name? Baby, hey, baby, where you going, baby? <laughs> baby, baby. <laughs> Guys, we're talking to you now, very quickly. Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, if you left a comment on last week's Wolf Den, Wolf Den podcast, this is the part of the show where we will finally answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everyone else. The Retro Future last week said, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. No problem, Elliot. Yeah, thanks for being fun here. for me too. I got to go off in the middle of a podcast and do bugger all. Uh, hey, that's British. Um, yeah, yeah, we had the Retro Future on last week. It was a lot of fun. We, I hope to do more stuff like that. Uh, William Wolf, who is our father, says, you yes. need more hashtag Wolf Den Dad on the Bob Wolf channel. He doesn't want no part of this channel, I guess. Yeah. Our dad, because of last week's Wolf Den podcast, found out who Mr. Beast is and now does not shut up about Mr. Beast and how we should be more like Mr. Beast. So if you yes. have any ideas on how we can be more like Mr. Beast, let us know. Yes. And also feel free to let our father know so he can remind us every waking minute of every day. Yes. You could tweet at him at yes. uh, w wolfie on twitter don't look at his tweets just tweet at him yeah yeah <laughs> uh shilvio d linton says i would like to see nintendo do vr or motion controls with a power glove like implementation modern tech should be able to pull off the glove form factor much better than what was out there and start competing with the index fingers uh, index controllers i'm sorry like the valve index controllers yeah yeah uh people don't remember this but mattel actually made the power glove Ooh, yeah i didn't know that so it's not it's not really a nintendo like i'm sure a nintendo it's a nintendo thing but like i believe power glove is owned by mattel so I but think... having said that i get what they're saying about like joining the vr space and whatnot i'm disappointed in nintendo's vr stuff because labo vr is awesome and there's like a right. lot of great potential there but they and they did a lot with it when it came out but then it they sort of it fizzled out and they stopped working they did you don't hear anything about nintendo vr anymore um mm -hmm. that being said if they're gonna make their own controller and stuff for vr they're gonna do it in their own weird nintendo way um but labo vr is awesome if you can get it for cheap you should go give it a shot because it's 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 worth playing around with yeah raymond b says i agree with retro dude bob your videos are amazing and as someone who's enjoyed every aspect of your channel for years they just keep getting better thanks thank you raymond i you're, you're gonna you're gonna make me blush <laughs> parker rosek says does it count as notification click through if you push watch later i get a lot while i am at work or meetings and just add it to the queue. I honestly, I would imagine that it counts because you're clicking the notification. You're just not watching the video. You're putting it in the watch later. Um, right. I don't know. I don't, I, the problem is if you're not watching the whole video, that does kind of hurt our, our retention time. But if you watch it later, it's okay. Basically watch however you want to watch as long as you watch. I don't want you to no. purposely change your habits just because the algorithm is garbage. Like, uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna put in your watch later and you're actually gonna watch it, then by all means do that. If you're gonna click through the notification, play the video, and then forget to actually watch it later, that's not worth it. You know. So keep doing what you're doing. As long as you're actually watching the video, eventually keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. I appreciate you going above and beyond anyway 
Now we're talking to the chat. How you doing, chat? Damn, Everybody's talking about Scott the Waz's Twitter getting hacked. Is it still hacked? I saw somebody say something about it. I but think I, so. I assumed it was done by then. I, yeah, I think it's still... I went to search before, and I don't think his Twitter is even up. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's up. Yeah. Somebody link to it or something? Anybody got a link? Of course, everything's slowing down. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think his Twitter's up at all. They changed the at. Oh god! So it's still it's still messed up. Um. Oh, he's called Bill, which is like a fusion of Bob and Will. Talking about my father. It's not wrong. <laughs> it's not wrong. The hacker got banned, but Scott's Twitter is still up. Wait, wait, can I get a link to what's happening? Hey, we got like screenshots yeah. of what they were posting, or was it like not safe for life? Yeah, it, it involved a word that begins with N. Oh, yeah, why that's, is that that's what I keep to? seeing. Why is that the go to whenever somebody hacks a Twitter account? Get a little more creative. <sighs> yeah. Post porn, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather that. Like a normal person. Matt Woe says, I can't even remember a time without the word yeet. Everybody's asking you how uh, Wonder Woman was, Will. So, I really liked it. I thought it was great. I enjoyed every single second of it. Uh, were there weird things in it? Yes. Is Were there things that like were like didn't make a whole lot of sense? Not a lot, in my opinion. Um, I don't understand. I like maybe it's just me. I don't know where all this, this, uh, n these negative reviews are coming from. I'm gonna watch the movie again, hopefully within the next thirty days before it leaves HBO Max. Because maybe I am wrong. A doubtful. I'm never wrong with this stuff. But for the two and a half hours I sat there watching the movie, I was enthralled the entire way through. I enjoyed it very much. It is my favorite film of 2020. That's not saying much, but I enjoyed every second of it. Um, and I highly recommend if you have the time, go and watch it yourself. Judge it for yourself. And who knows? Maybe you, you'll you enjoy it as much as I did. I know Bob really liked it. Now that's slander. That is... Th no, that is that is the truth. You enjoyed every second I never of it. saw I, it, and I'm, I don't intend to ever see it. You, you love... You you said, you said it yourself. You said, that was a good movie. I can't wait to watch it with my niece when she's of age to do that, because that's what I'm going to do. I'm a, I'm a girl uncle now. I have to do things like that. I don't want to... I don't think I want to show... Uh, this, this, Scott the Wise's Twitter account is just shit posting. It's not like yeah. know, anything like crazy bad... Um, they posted the the password they used to get in. And I don't want to show it, but it it looks like a string yeah. of letters and numbers. So like I don't know how they would get huh. there. That's pretty yeah. weird. Um, I mean I hope he had two factor on. I don't think he did. Put two get two factor authentication. Everybody always always use two factor authentication for everything you use. Although there was a time when two factor was actually not helpful like that, right. that's how people were getting in to some i don't know anyway uh yeah it's just a bunch of shit posting it's like things like not funny memes and stuff um i'm sure i'm sure everything will be fine eventually with him mm -hmm. i think he's on like a break right now he's trying to like be on vacation and then this shit happens that sucks uh looked like an automated password he used for his account i, I think i think i think the two factor really got him they probably mm. he's probably just got dictionary attacked or something uh tenant was pretty good but of course people have swapped since it came out to saying it sucks because of the internet uh i i, I do want to see that yeah i want to see that too i, I haven't heard preview. anybody 
I don't know of anybody who swapped. I think if you like when the movie came out, there were people saying it was either good or it was bad because of one reason or another. You know, I uh, think io9 even put it as one of their worst movies of the year. Like, and they've consistently hated that movie. Oh my god. Uh, the the uh, I saw the little. There's like a little like preview on YouTube. That doesn't make any yeah. freaking sense at all. <laughs> but it looks. I'll just cool. wait for it to come on. I'll just wait for it to come on HBO Max because that's the way Christopher Nolan wanted it to be seen. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um. What else? Just want to say that even if you don't like Rogue Likes, Hades is a good time. I feel like I would like Hades. I just uh, a lot of other things I'd rather play. That's it. Yeah. Just uh, it's just unfortunate. Uh... Did you get that caption card? You're gonna make a video. What are you talking about? Oh, the capture card. Uh, no. Not yet. Well, yeah. I mean, I pre-ordered. I did the Kickstarter, so whenever it comes, I'll I'll do it. But I'm. Oh, the Genki one. Yeah, the Genki thing. What it was, yeah. So we'll see. We'll put it through uh, the paces. Do you guys have any New Year's resolutions? I don't usually do that. I don't. Uh, know. F- yeah, I, I gotta. I have to like get in some sort of like exercise regimen because I am I am fat and my knees don't work. I'm thinking of getting a personal trainer, even though I have a gym in this building that I never use. Ooh, look at look at you, Mister. Because that'll force Mr. me to Man. do it, you know. Yeah. But I, I mean, it would be terrible to get one in January. So maybe yeah. I'll just ease into it. I used to do exercise. I had like an exercise regimen, and then it completely went out the window in like November when things started to pick up. Yeah, I saw I. I was doing good, like going on our treadmill every so often. And then I got poison ivy. I just did not want to do anything because it was just irritating all the time. And then I'm just like, man, I like sitting down. I forgot how good sitting down is. So, so I guess I, I mean, I don't like calling it a New Year's resolution because it should be something that you just do. You, you shouldn't need a new year to get yourself doing something. Yeah. But I've been waiting for the holidays to be over to start working out again. I do yeah, want to finally get through this book, Japanese from Zero. <laughs> I've re- I got like two pages in and I stopped because I've been busy. Yeah. Um, I do need to fix my schedule. I got a lot of things to do. Um, so yeah, there you go. There's your answer. Um, all right, uh, I- I'm done. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. I can be done. Guys, thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. So if you can't make the show, you can always watch it on demand on your schedule whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast over on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast. And of course, on your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you watch or listen to us, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective stores. Uh, We'll see you next year guys so, ha, ha, yeah. uh, we'll have a new year of wolf den podcast so it'll be next tuesday yeah, it'll be a great time all right everybody uh i'm just seeing if any of our friends are online right now no oh aj's on everybody go watch aj he's playing uh Smash there you Cubs. go uh thank you for being here uh and we'll see you next week or actually i'll probably see you tomorrow for a stream but anyway goodbye go go to aj bye. and say hi if you're here on the live stream Bye, 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 bye.